Welcome to the State Television Campaign of Western Armenia, broadcast for today. A delegation of the Republic of Western Armenia visited the memorial complex of Major Armenia. The opening ceremony of the Office of the National Assembly of the Republic of Western Armenia. The churches were replaced, the graves were destroyed, the report on the cultural destruction in carried out on Baku in Artsakh, the Figaro. Holding COP29 in a country like Baku is a tragic phenomenon in itself. Jonathan Spangenberg. Armenian by nationality Maria Gabriela was elected a member of the Parliament of Syria. We criticized the hopeless efforts of the Baku authorities to appear transparent and democratic pan Armenian Union. The famous Greek singer refused to perform under Atatürk's portrait. The delegation of the Republic of Western Armenia visited the memorial complex of Major Armenia. President of the Republic of Western Armenia, Ms. Lydia Margosian, President of the National Council of the Republic of Western Armenia, Mr. Armen Akabrahamian, the Chairwoman of the National Assembly of the Republic of Western Armenia, Ms. Nelly Hayatunyan, and members of Parliament have visited the Major Armenia Symbolic Memorial Complex, which is the symbol of the Armenian heroes who participated in war. The delegation paid tribute to the heroes and recalled the National Liberation Movement, the heroic battles of Artsakh, in which Mr. Armen Akabrahamian, the first president of the Republic of Western Armenia, had his direct participation. Glory to the heroic victims of all times. In the year one office of the Republic of Western Armenia, the opening event took place related to the ceremony of the Office of the National Assembly of the Republic of Western Armenia. The opening of the ceremony transacted between the President of the Republic of Western Armenia, Ms. Lydia Margosian, and the Chairwoman of the National Assembly of the Republic of Western Armenia, Ms. Nelly Hayatunyan. It is a great honor to be present on this important day here together with you, emphasized President Lydia Margosian before the ceremony of the ribbon cutting was noted. President Mr. Armen Akabrahamian was also present at the ceremony as well as Deputy Prime Minister Mr. Arman Hakopian and members of Parliament. Based on satellite images, the European Centre for Law and Justice describes in detail the alarming disappearance and destruction of Armenian heritage monuments in Artsakh, which in September 2023 came under the control of Baku. The French newspaper Le Figaro, referring to this report, wrote that all this is not only the fear of 100,000 Armenians forcibly displaced from their homeland after the Baku military operation in September 2023, but also a conclusion drawn by the European Centre for Law and Justice. An international Christian NGO describes in detail the cultural destruction, which is implemented by Baku in the region. Churches and cemeteries were destroyed, crosses were removed. This isolated and destructive policy uses revisionism to destroy the heritage of Armenians of Artsakh, where is the organization located in Strasbourg. The newspaper writes that in the Artsakh region, which has been continuously inhabited by Armenians since ancient times and is a disputed region between Eastern Armenia and Baku after the collapse of the Soviet Union, there are about 500 cultural sites where about 6,000 relics of Armenian heritage are kept. As a result of the 44-day war of 2020, almost 70% of the territory of Artsakh came under the yoke of Baku. After occupying the entire territory of Artsakh in September 2023, Baku has consistently denied foreign observers access to cultural sites, despite numerous requests from Army and international organizations. That's through satellite damages collected by researchers and organizations, the European Center for Law and Justice was able to accurately inventory destroyed churches, missing statues, or destroyed cemeteries. Human rights protection organization operating in Germany demanded the government and COP29 delegation to intervene and urged the Baku government to immediately release before the conference is held all Armenian political prisoners in Baku and put an end to Aliyev's genocidal tyranny. This is reported by us weekly newspaper referring to Frankfurt Rantschau, a daily newspaper based in Germany. The newspaper also referred to the continuous threats against Eastern Armenia. It is noted that the threat against Armenia is the existential threat. Baku school children are taught to struggle against the barbaric enemies of the Armenian nation terrorists. They add that holding such an important congress dedicated to climate change in a country like Baku is a tragic phenomenon in itself. Germany not only has that opportunity, but also bears historical responsibility as a country complicit in the genocide committed against Armenians. The article reads, 
The journalist of the newspaper, Eric Campehlivan, also conducted an interview with the deputies of the two parties of the coalition government of the Bundestag parliament. Social Democrat Frank Schwabe, answering the journalist's question, noted that the quantitative increase is very dramatic because last year the number of political prisoners inside the country quadrupled, exceeding 300. This is one of the reasons why Azerbaijan delegates were forbidden to participate in the parliamentary assembly of the Council of Europe, he added. And Max Lux from the Green Party demanded the government to take stricter measures. We are obliged to speak openly with Baku and not remain silent for the sake of preserving our new energy cooperation. I say this because I see how Baku keeps Armenians under arrest simply because we have often been too weak in the past. It is a carte blanche for every regime that considers freedom a threat and applying pressure as a solution to its various issues, said Lux. The Supreme Judicial Commission for the Parliamentary Election of Syria has announced the names of 150 elected members of parliament. The united candidate of the Armenian nation, Maria Manu Gabrielian, was elected as a member of parliament. She is the only Armenian deputy elected as a result of the elections of the fourth legislative session of the Syrian parliament. Syria's ruling National Progressive Front, led by the Arab Socialist Renaissance Party, retained a majority of 184 parliamentary seats, while independent member of parliament won 66 seats. After holding the extraordinary presidential elections, the Central Electoral Committee of Baku has now moved on to the legalization of the extraordinary parliamentary elections and the additional legitimization of the ruling regime. However, in this official staged process, Banahov, the chairman of the Central Electoral Committee of Baku, made a number of ridiculous statements which are as far from reality as Baku is from democracy. Cardinal Shirvan Ahijevan Pan Armenian Union writes about this. Speaking about the elect transparency of the elections, Panahov seems to forget that the 2023 report of the Freedom House Human Rights Organization has already recorded that the extraordinary presidential elections or the formation of the state bodies that preceded it did not take place through free and fair elections. He also notes that Baku is the only state where mass media don't register to observe the elections. But Mr. Panahov again forgets that the same Freedom House rated freedom of press in their country as zero. Therefore, why is it, is it necessary to register the mass media if none of them will record any election violation and the mass media that could record have been closed for a long time and the journalists have been arrested or deported? The Armenian Union emphasized. Baku emphasized that the delegations from all continents will come to observe the elections. The Armenian Union also knows that it is not difficult to remind the chairman of the Baku Central Election Committee that during the previous presidential elections, Baku did not even send an observation invitation to the PACE, also because of which the Baku parliamentary delegation was expelled from the PACE for one year. Therefore, the likely high representation of observers is not an indicator of high political will and transparency and democracy, but simply a cheap attempt to avoid the harsh reality in eyes of the international community. And can Panahov answer the question why Baku is not ready to ensure the a radical re-evaluation of the rights of the Armenian population under the conditions of strong international guarantees? The government Shirvan Nahijevan Pan-Armenian Union strongly criticizes the hopeless efforts of the Baku authorities to appear transparent and democratic, considering them as missing the despicable process of covering up crimes against humanity and evading responsibility for them. The famous Greek singer Despina Vandi cancelled her performance at the concert of the Turkish Educational Foundation. As reported by the Greek reporter, the singer made the such decision after learning that a poster with the portrait of Kemal Ataturk was displayed on the stage. The concert took place in Izmir. On her Instagram page, Vandi clarified the decision not to go on stage. With all due respect to the audience whose presence graced my speech, I announced that my participation in the concert is impossible solely due to the fault of the Turkish Education Foundation which unilaterally and without warning decided to distort the essence of the concert, giving it a political tone. This was all for today. Goodbye.